Hello guys, and welcome to yet another video. Uh, it's the third day of school as I'm writing this, and um, I've already gotten in trouble. So we have a story now. Uh, <laughs> this is wonderful. I'm sort of half reading this from a script, so I apologize if it sounds terrible, but we're gonna go with it. Anyway, so for those of you who don't already know, I wear cloaks and I dress Harajuku, which isn't that important to the story, but I, I very often wear cloaks. You, you know the clothing I mean. I've actually already done a video on this topic, thus they continued in the title. So if you'd like to watch that old video, I'll, I'll link it in the description, but you don't have to. It's okay if you don't, because I'm going to go over what happened then, because the details are very important to this friggin' story. It's terrible. So. Cloaks. What's so bad about them? Apparently, I look like a school shooter from 20 years ago, and it's irritating a single teacher's PTSD, making me a safety liability. You see, October 1st, 1997, Luke Woodham, our school shooter, stabbed his mother to death and proceeded to shoot up Pearl High School. And apparently, our dear art teacher was there, and a floor-length cloak that's frayed to bits made me look like him. You see, he, he was wearing a, a trench coat to conceal his rifle. This gleaned from the Wikipedia article about it. But before we continue, I must give you some information about my cloak. It's floor length, it's black, it's heavy, and it's thick. However, I made it incorrectly, as I have my other two, and I can't close it fully. You can pull it together in the front, sort of, but it's uncomfortable and very obvious that you're trying because the very top, close to the clasp, doesn't actually close around my shoulders. It's not like I wrapped up in it all the time or flaunted it in her face. This cloak I made the weekend of my marching band state competition, and I remember that because I got the cloth right after marching. I'm not sure exactly what date, but this year's is October 12th, so it must have been right around then. I remember staying up all night long Saturday and working most of Sunday to finish this cloak in time to wear it that Monday, and I was so excited. I definitely wore it. It is here where the original story starts. Our schedule is split into A days and B days. Basically, instead of eight classes in one day, we alternate four classes on each day. That Monday was a B day, and my lunch block was geometry with, let's go with Miss Johnson. Her classroom was on the same hallway as the art teacher, who we'll call Miss Byrne, and the art teacher's classroom is right next to that hall's bathrooms. There is another bathroom just about the same distance from that classroom, but we went as a group, and it's just sort of natural to go to the bathroom on your hall. This is important because, like most people, I habitually use the bathroom just after eating. It's what I do. On this particular day, we were too loud, so we went in pairs instead of as a class, which would be the norm. Now, I'm in marching band, so when I was called, I didn't walk as slowly as my dilly-dallying partner. Instead, I went on down at great speed. You see, I had to frickin' pee. <sighs> At this time, Miss Vern was outside of her classroom. I can only presume that she was standing there watching kids leave and come back from the restrooms next door, and she noticed me as I was exiting the bathroom, having completed my business. We were actually doing something new in geometry that day, so when she asked me why I was wearing that, I replied with something to the likes of, because I didn't want to wear a jacket, and went on my way, because even geniuses can be taught a few things. So into class I went, and took my seat next to my best friend. A moment passed. And another one. And then in came his fern. She whispered something to Miss Johnson that was unintelligible, and off she went, opposite her classroom, towards the office. And yet again, a moment passed before we all hear Winnie Kirkusland in the office from the intercom. I looked at my best friend, and I told him that it was my cloak, and ambled up to the office. I'll be honest, any time I hear my name come from the intercom, I panic. No idea why, but I do. However... I also know when to keep my cool and think rationally, so when I entered that room, I was as calm as I could be when I asked what was wrong with my cloak. As I entered, there was a secretary and one of the counselors who will call Miss Joy. 
Both were standing up across from one another at the desk. It was explained to me that my cloak was triggering Miss Burns' PTSD because she was at the Pearl shooting more than 20 years ago and she thought I could hide a gun in it. Would I be willing to take it off? Sure. That morning, my dad told me that for that day, I was to not put up much of a fight. So sure. I took it off, draped it over my arm, and went back to class. It stayed off for the rest of class, but when the bell rang, I got back up to leave, and I put it right back on, and the rest of the day went on without a hitch. For those of you who don't get the implications of this, I just went through a full two and a half classes before getting a single complaint from a single teacher that apparently warranted an office visit. No one else bothered me about it except to compliment me. Seems strange, right? Afterwards, I went the rest of that third class and one more class full without a single other altercation with any other member of the faculty, staff, or administration. The following day was an A day, and if I remember correctly, I had lunch with my Spanish teacher. This meant that I never had to go anywhere near our dear Miss Fern's classroom. The entire day, the whole day, I wore my cloak with not a single complaint from anyone. And then the next day came. We're back to a B day. It was on this day that many of the events from the previous story took place. The first altercation occurred before school even started. I was standing outside in the courtyard area at a picnic table with my best friend and a few other people. My backpack was on, so my cloak was hanging awkwardly over the top of it. It was my band director that walked up to me and told me that they said I couldn't wear my cloak. Nothing against her, she's amazing, and she really acted like she didn't care, but I was still not going to take it off. After this interaction, I went through my first class without a hitch. Between our first and second classes, we have a short break, during which time I hang around with my bestie. On this day, instead of standing outside or sitting at a table, we were standing in the hallway between the two sections of the cafeteria in the circle. Now, we have four frickin' principles. Why? I don't know, but one of them, we'll call him Mr. Thomas, is an enormous burly man. Now, he's very sweet, but that makes him a might bit intimidating. I'm less than half his size. During our break time, he has a habit of selling snacks. He has a cardboard box that he carries around and sells things in, so, you know, whatever. I noticed that he was walking towards me. Of course, I was still wearing my cloak and thought nothing of it. The man was holding his box. I figured he was making his rounds and selling things. Props to him. But then he stopped next to me and told me that I'd have to take my cloak off. Alright. Well. I asked him why. To which he replied that I'd have to because he said so. For those of you who don't know, this statement grinds my gears. I was raised to be respectful and I was raised to take orders, but I was also raised to expect a good reason why. And if I didn't have one, then I wasn't to do it. Uh, unless, of course, it was my parents, because I, I trust they always have a good reason. <laughs> so when he said that to me, I was automatically just, just, just a little ticked. So I told him that there was no rule against it. And his reply was that I'd either have to take it off or go talk to the head principal. So I told him that I was going to the office, and that's exactly where I went. So the head principal, we'll call her Miss Mushroom, was apparently busy with meetings or something of that sort. So when I got up there, I made an appointment. I was to be called up there at the end of my second class on account of benchmarks. I was sure I'd be finished by then, so no problem. So I took my test, the end of the class came, then it went, and all of a sudden, it was lunch again back in geometry. Back where it started. I was understandably upset. I put together an appointment, was made a promise, and no one fulfilled that promise. But it was lunchtime. Food. Food was good. My best friend was there. Friends were good. Time to have food and friends. So off we went. I was now standing in the cafeteria line with my best friend. I was feeling good about life. The world's amazing. When I turn behind me and lock eyes with Miss Fern, he almost immediately starts speed walking at me at a remarkable pace. She starts half yelling at me that I cannot wear my cloak. It's against school rules. So on and so forth, argument after argument, and I tried to calmly explain that no, my cloak does not break school rules. I checked. And then she grabbed me by the forearm and started dragging me to the office. By the time we got into the lobby area, I got my arm out of hers, and at this point, I am in the wrong. Because when she told me to talk to Miss Mushroom, I was done. 
So I raised my voice and I told her that I tried an hour and a half ago. I really tried. I walked in there and made an entire appointment that wasn't fulfilled. And after that, she continued to angrily drag me in there. As we entered, she told me that I was going to take my cloak off until I could talk to Miss Mushroom. And I refused, because I was not going to be punished for not breaking the rules. I was sat down in a chair there in the office, and then eventually the counselor, Miss Joy, showed up and started half interrogating me, egging me on, asking me questions. I tried not to answer, but some of them I couldn't help. It's just me. I'm anxious, and I hate confrontation, but I'm social and love to talk. When they left, I waited for another few minutes. By this time, my best friend came in and offered me his meal from the lunch that I'd missed, but I refused. I couldn't eat. I was scared, my insides were tied in knots, and I was terrified. But I was also angry. How dare they drag me out of my class to berate me for doing what I like in a perfectly acceptable way. The audacity it must have taken them to punish me for nothing. So again, I was alone. I was stewing, I was scared, I was angry. I felt tears prick at my eyes, but I held them back. Eventually, I got up and called my dad. He'd have my back. I knew I was right. When I sat back down, I took a deep breath. I called myself. I reasserted my coldest look. It was time for war. It took Dad about 20 minutes to get up to the school after I called him. And having already waited ha half an hour, I was a bit hungry. Doesn't matter, he's here. So I told him the story, that day's story, he knew about the rest. And after I finished, Miss Mushroom, our principal, exited her office and took us back. So into the line stand we go to discuss my attire. <laughs> Mr. Thomas was also in the room. Remember, he's big and burly. Anytime my dad is up there, he's in the room, or at least close by. We suspect that he's basically a bodyguard. This discussion led to Miss Mushroom revealing that allegedly there were more teachers involved in this mess. Wow! So my dad requested that they be brought in. And they were. All one of them. The art teacher. Miss Fern. The first thing she did when she walked in the room was spend a good five or ten minutes simply berating my character. I'm the most disrespectful student in the school. Just ask any of my other teachers. And goodness the way she treats me. Everyone in the room looks surprised. I just looked at my dad, shrugged in shock and mouthed, I don't know, when he looked at me with that questioning glance that all parents have. She regarded my cloak as a blanket, saying that since blankets weren't allowed, it shouldn't be either. She equated it to the trench coat that Luke wore that October day in 1997. She told me that I could hide a gun in it, that it was against the rules, except that it wasn't. For an hour, the four of us, with Miss Vern for a minute there, were cramped in a small office together, trying to reach a compromise. And eventually, it came to this. We're going to go with, she's disrupting the learning environment. And after that, we were just done. There wasn't a lot of fight left. We were at a stalemate, and neither of us were budging from our place. So Dad explained that he was only doing this under duress, that he did not agree with his arbitrary change of the rules based on a single teacher's opinion and feelings, and he took my cloak. Agreed that I wouldn't wear it at school, and I haven't since. Instead, I made a new one. I have a short, only down to my knees, white, thin cloak. I made this cloak for two reasons. One, it addresses every single complaint that this teacher had about my cloak, and two, it's a test. I wanted to see what would happen if I wore it. So I did. And now you've been caught up to the near present. So we get to the first day of junior year. I wore my white cloak that day. Of course I did. That's what I made it for. And similarly to the original story, it was after lunch that our confrontation takes place. As usual, I had to use the bathroom after eating, but this teacher, just like last time, sent us in pairs. However, regardless of this, I was sent alone because she had forgotten that I needed to go by the time everyone else went. Wonderful first day. This class was again on the same hallway as Miss Vern's class, so I hung a right to head to the bathroom only to see her standing in the hallway. I will be perfectly honest, the sight of her in the hall hallway struck me with a sense of minor panic. This was a bit different than the constant panic that afflicted me sitting in the office last year. This sort of panic was more potent and far more bothersome. My heart was beating in my ears. I could feel myself wanting to hyperventilate just a little. My stomach was tied in knots, and I was shaking. Overall, it was a terrible experience. Over time, I've learned that deliberate confrontation can be bad in some situations. Not funny. 
This is one of those situations, and I guess it just scares me that bad. However, I still refuse to be punished for my lack of breaking rules. Regardless of how much I might panic and die on the inside, I will fight to do what I please when I know that I'm right and well within the parameters of the rules. So down the hallway I went, walking stiff as a board so as not to shake, keeping my face as cool as possible, holding the ends of my cloak so it wouldn't just poof out. And then she notices me. You need to take that sheet off. Sheet. I need to take my sheet off. Now, I'm just a little mad. It's helping relieve the panic just a little bit, but I can't be angry. No. Calm. It's not a sheet. I actually spent quite a while making it. So what is it then? I didn't answer. I was actually trying to pee, you know? So I passed her, and she again tells me to take it off. No. There's no rule against it. At this point, some kid in the boys' bathroom line told me that yes, there was, and I told him that no, there isn't. I checked as I entered the bathroom. During this bathroom visit, I panicked alone and did my business. When I left a few minutes later, there was no one and nothing in the hallway. She was gone. However, as I was walking up the hallway back to class, my chemistry teacher, a great teacher, came out of her classroom and actually complimented me on my sense of style. During this short conversation, I explained the gist of the current situation to her. She seemed shocked. After that, I returned to class. That was that. I fully expected to be called to the office, but it never happened. Then, the next day came. Oddly enough, I got nearly to the end of the school day before I was called over the intercom. It was the middle of the last class of the day in English. We need Carcassonne in the office? I panicked. I always do when I hear my name over the intercom. It's what I do. But I walked up there and was directed to Mr. Thomas's office. I saw the referral on the desk, read it, and told him that I had nothing against him, but I wouldn't be talking about the problem until I called Dad. I had to wait for Miss Joy to get into the office before I could. It took her a ridiculous amount of time to get there, so I was chatting with Mr. Thomas. First, I explained the story, and he was surprised that I'd gone three classes, and only she had bothered me about it. He also kept asking about my grades, my plans for the future, and my test scores. He's an amazing man, but I think it's pretty obvious that he had an ulterior motive. You see, I'm a bright student, and he'd hate for anything to happen to me. Of course, I don't think his motives were malicious, I just also think that they were partially for his benefit. Good, good test scores reflect well on the principles. Eventually, Miss Joy found her way to the office, and I caught her up while Mr. Thomas dialed up my dad. The following conference took place with Dad on speakerphone. We all discussed what had happened. Dad explained that my cloak was just fine and was made specifically to address her safety concerns. He proceeded to explain that if she was continuing with the safety issue argument, then this wasn't a safety thing. It was a persecution thing. Miss Joy suggested that I not wear my cloak in that class. However, I don't have Miss Fern's class. She was incredibly surprised by this information. By the end of the conference, I'd gotten permission from both the principal and the counselor to wear my cloak and agreed to use a different bathroom, and that was the end of it. Except, more things happened the following day. I need to go just a little bit off script here because I forgot to write it down. That day, I needed to carry a lot of stuff up to school for my theater class, so Dad had to take me up to school because I couldn't carry all of that on the bus and I haven't gotten a parking decal yet, so it's, it's a fun day. Well, because Dad carried me and my brother up to school, we got there really early. We got there before Miss Joy came in. So when she came in, I was wearing my cloak that day. I stood up for her and showed her my cloak. This is the cloak that I was talking about yesterday. And she looked at me and she was like, yeah, that's fine. And went on. Later on, uh, Mr. Thomas came in and told me that as long as Miss Joy was okay with it, then he was okay with it. So that's our official permission. Back to our script, though. My first class went fairly well. I went to break, enjoyed myself. It was a fairly good day. I went through break, and that was nice. But then I was almost to my second class, chemistry. I was walking to the classroom, almost there, when Miss Fern catches me in the hall. You need to take that sheet off! You know that tone of voice where someone's not yelling, but they might as well be? That's what she sounded like. I hadn't known that she was there, and honestly, she scared the crap out of me. I fell into sheer panic, but quietly. I responded quite firmly with, No, I actually have permission from a principal to wear it. 
This time, however, she really did yell at me. Which one? She asked angrily. She's glaring at me as if I've killed her children. So I tell her, Mr. Thomas, and she storms off, thinking, that's the end of it. I, I go put my things down in the classroom and do some wandering around the room. I was not yet quite ready to submit my butt to a chair for the next hour and a half. I ended up about a foot inside the classroom right at the doorway when suddenly there she is again. She's following another principal, we'll call her Mr. Harris, and she points me out to him, screaming something like, and this one, blah 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 blah. I can't really remember what she said at that point. I just know it was something about my cloak and insubordination and such and such and such. All I know about the rest of the day is that I was panicky and kind of upset and just done. I was at lunch with a friend of mine when my best friend showed up and I had to get hugs from him. It was that bad. So I told Dad at the end of the day when he came to pick me up. That morning I had to take my recording equipment for a video, like I said earlier, that I put up on my second channel actually. And now he's going to call her up for a conference. So that means mini part three. <laughs> Yay. Not really. I'll update you on the story in another video, but for the moment, the Great Cloak Saga has come to a close. And that's fun. So what all happened out of this? Well, we have a student who's really panicky. We have a teacher who's being problematic. And then there's just the rest of me. You see, we live in a one-party consent state, and this is very important. So I found the voice meter app on my stupid little iPhone 4, and I put it where I could get to it really quick. So I've decided that I'm going to start recording my comings and goings between classes. Just in case she catches me in the hallway again. So I can document some of what goes on. Perhaps you'll get to hear it. Maybe. We might put it in here. I don't know. I have to bleep some things. Whatever. But anyways, thanks for watching. And I'll see you next time.